Good morning, Patriots. We're going to read today Cat vs. Dog by James Patterson. Give me just a second. I'll have to break this one into chapters, it looks like. Chapter 1. Oscar hung his head out the window of his father's pickup truck, his tongue flapping in the breeze. It was his favorite thing. Oscar watched the wind sling his stringy slobber sideways. It was his favorite thing. The truck was going 70, maybe 80 miles an hour, swerving around all the other cars and trucks and motorcycles. Oscar saw shiny hubcaps spinning everywhere. He wanted to chase them all because chasing stuff was his favorite thing. I had breakfast this morning. It's my favorite thing. I saw a squirrel. It's my favorite thing. Oops, I just farted. It's my favorite thing. Oscar knew that this family vacation to the Western Frontier Park was going to be awesome because the ride to the park already was. It was his favorite road trip ever. Suddenly, Oscar heard something wet go splat. His father growled behind the wheel. Oh, cheese on a biscuit. One of them stupid cats in that stupid SUV just stuck out his stupid head and hocked up a hairball. It splatted all over my windshield. Duke, said Oscar's mom, did you forget to take your distemper shot this morning? No, Lola, because this was supposed to be a fun family vacation and splat. Another wet gob of slimy hair coated with crud hit the windshield. Oh, bully stick, grumbled Oscar's dad. Why can't they just burp or something? just jammed on Paul down an escalator. The truck shot up the road even faster, but no, they always got to hock up two hairballs. He put on the funny fancy pants cat voice. Oh, look at me, I'm so special, I'm a cat. Every time I puke, I puke twice. And they have to do that stupid thing where they heave their shoulders up and down. Then go back and gack, 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 like they have to announce that there's going to be puke. Cats are so totally gross and disgusting, so let's give them something to really puke about, growled Dad. He pressed his paw down harder on the escalator. The rambling truck roared and rattled and raced up the road. Duke yelped Oscar's mom, holding on to an overhead handle for dear life. You're scaring me. Then sit on a wee-wee pad, Lola, because a dog's gotta do what a dog's gotta do. I'm chasing that cat. Oscar gave that hearty howl. Oh, the dusty pickup zoomed up the highway, cutting in and out of traffic until it was parallel with the sleek black SUV. Hey, Mr. Whiskers, Dad shouted across the front seat to the cat behind the wheel. What were you, pu what were you puking? Oscar panted in a happy anticipation. This was going to be so, so good. Listen to his father's yell at cats was his favorite, favorite thing. Chapter 2. Cat's Turn. Molly Hisselton sat in the back seat of her family's SUV, pretending to enjoy the classical music her father was listening to on the radio. Molly was an excellent actress. She was good at pretending things. The brand new, fully equipped SUV, it had a litter box behind the back seat, hummed along the highway contently with its soft motor. Isn't meow arts marvelous, said Molly's father as he conducted the symphonic music with synchronized flick of his tail. Who decapitated this mouth and dropped its headless body into my cup holder? That was me, Dad. Well done, son. Well done. Molly's mother was curled up in the sunny front seat, napping peacefully. Molly's brother, Blade, who was feeling better after a brief bout of car sickness, which included some hairball hurling, was playing with his handled game gizmo, chasing a red dot. The cats were on their way to Western Frontier Park, home of a rare, exotic, and frightfully wild creature. Molly couldn't wait. It was promised to be an extraordinarily dramatic vacation. Suddenly, a ratty old pickup truck filled with slobbering dogs, yuck, pulled alongside the cat's sports utility vehicle. The curly furred mop in the passenger seat was covering her eyes with both paws while the snarling dog behind the wheel barked something fierce. Of course, Molly couldn't hear what he was barking. The SUV had very good soundproofing. There was a young dog, a boy about Molly's age, with his head hanging out the rear cab window. The boy was slobbering all over himself. So disgusting. A fuzzy tennis ball bounced off the SUV's driver window. Molly rolled her eyes. Dogs were forever tossing tennis balls. Molly's father sighed and powered down his tinted window. Molly glanced at the speedometer. 
They were flying along at 80 miles an hour. Molly sank her claws into the seat so she wouldn't get blown away. Yes, her father sneered at the dogs through a sly grin. Might I be of some assistance? Are you dogs looking for yet another place to pee? Pull over, barked the dog behind the wheel. Oh my, said Molly's father in the snarky way that always made her giggle. Listen to the dog using his words, both of them. I know more words than them too, shouted the dog. Oh, really? Then speak, sir. Speak. I'm all ears. No, wait. That's my son. That's your son, except where's, where is he all th where he's all tongue, of course. You want some of this? shouted the driver dog, shaking a bald up paw at Molly's father. Some of what? he replied. Your dog breath? Kindly chew a milk bone before your next public speaking engagement, sir. Your beef jerky breath is stinking up the highway. I'm going to stink you up, cat. Is everything okay, Boomer Darling? asked Molly's mom as she stretched and yawned in the passenger seat. seat. Yes, Fluffy dear, go back to sleep, just attempting to teach this old dog a new trick. Good luck with that, she recurled her body and fell back asleep. Are we there yet? asked Blade, looking up momentarily from his video game. No, said Molly, father's dealing with a dog. I hate dogs, said Blade. Yes, Blade, said Molly, we're cats. Hating dogs is what we do. Always have, always will. Molly's father hissed at dog, showing his sharp teeth. The dogs barked ferociously. The cats meowed merrily. Then Molly's father pushed the gas pedal to the floor and shot up the road like a rocket and left the dog mobile behind in a cloud of dust and fumes. Dogs chuckled Molly's father. The more they bark, the less I care. Mm, father said Molly, looking out the rear window. Yes, Dumpling, the dogs, they're gaining on us. Looks like they're all going down the road. Chapter 3. The two vehicles screeched through the front gates of the Western Frontier Park in a cloud of smoke and a shower of sparks exactly at the same second. Oscar's dad bounded out of the pickup truck, wagging his tail. Woof, hoo, in your face, cat, we beat you. Woof, fiddity doo dah, yelped Oscar. My dad's the best. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. The cat driver slowly slink out of the SUV, daintily licking his right paw as if he hadn't, didn't have a care in the whole wide world. In what alternative universe does losing equal winning flea brain, he asked. Who are you calling flea brain, hairball? If the stupid fits, wear it. Well, at least I don't smell like a can of tuna that's been sitting in the sun all day. No, you smell like a wet dog. What's the matter? Couldn't wait till you found a fire hydrant? What about you, still peeing in a sandbox and trying to cover it up? Enough, shrieked the commanding voice of a majestic-looking hawk owl who was wearing a park ranger uniform and riding a horse with antlers. Wow, said Oscar, he's a park hawk, a park owl. Yes, whispered his mother. The park is filled with many magical and mythical creatures. Bunch of weirdos, whispered Oscar dad out of the side of his muzzle. He looks like a freak. I'm a she, said the hawk owl, and thanks to my owl half, I have a highly developed auditory system. Huh, said Oscar's father. She said she can hear very, very well, you dumb dog, shouted the cat driver as the rest of his family piled out of the SUV to preen in the sunshine, except the teenage cat boy. He was playing a video game and stayed inside the car. Welcome to the Western Frontier Park. FYI, my horse is actually part moose, said the park owl. Are you there yet? He yelled. He yowled. Yes, Blade. Then let's leave. I'm bored. Can you soar like a hawk, ma'am? Oscar asked the park ranger eagerly, which is how he asked everything. The hawk owl nodded. Best of both species. I'm hawk-eyed and owl-eared. His horse is weird, too, Oscar's dad muttered. Whoever heard of a horse with antlers? Me, said the hawk owl, as I said. I have very good hearing. Chapter 4 My ancestors, you see, said the wise hawk owl, tucking her wings behind her back, realized something you cats and dogs have failed to learn. The world is filled with many fierce and wild creatures, especially here on the far edge of civilization. The dog family tilted their head in sideways and listened. The cat shut their eyes and yawned. Boring, whined Blade. The hawk owl kept going. My ancestors quickly realized that up against the ferocious beast who still roamed the dark forest of this wilderness, they must somehow learn to live together, and they would surely die alone, or they would surely die alone. 
and that, Oscar's dad whispered snidely, is how you end up with a freak's show riding a horse moose. The dogs panted out of a hee-hee chuckle. I can still hear you, said the hawk owl, tapping the side of her owl head with the tip of her hawk wing. Good ears, remember? Whatever, muttered Fifi, who, like many teenagers, grew impatient whenever boring old people spoke wisely. Tell us when you're done, park person, said the tubby tubby. Tubby tabby blade, we're missing our naps. Well, pray tell is the cat section, asked the cat mom. We all need to bathe. You mean lick yourself, shouted Oscar's dad. Oscar howled with laughter. The hawk outside, oh, east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. Huh, said Oscar's dad. It's poetry, said the snobby cat dad, as his family climbed back into their SUV. Read a book sometime. Why read them when you can chew them, said Oscar's dad, leading the way back into the pickup truck. Oscar hopped into the back seat and stuck his head out the window again. What a shame, he heard the hawk owl laminate to her moose horse. What a waste of our beautiful park. The enmity between your two species has caused this world so much grief. Who can forget the saga of the dogs dumping catnip into Poston Harbor or the horrible battle of Gettysburg during Third War I? All creatures great and small have suffered because of this enduring cat-dog feud that will never, ever end. That made Oscar so happy he wagged his tail. He was glad dogs and cats would never live together in peace. He didn't want to ever use a litter box or chase a red laser dot. Cats were dumb, and there was no way he would ever feel different about them. Chapter 5 Every morning for the next five days, Oscar did the exact same thing, because dogs like routine. Bright and early before the rest of the family, he had even crawled out of their dog beds. Oscar would bound out for his tent and give the air a good long sniff. Delicious. Dew mixed with clover with a hint of pine, sassafras, and mud. This park is paradise, he exclaimed, checking out the green fields, rolling hills, and deep, deep forest of the distant mountains. His tail was wagging to the right, which is the way it always wagged when he was happy. If it flapped to the left first, that meant he was scared. But there was nothing to be scared of about in the Western Frontier Park, no matter what that freaky old park ranger said. So many sticks to fetch, so many fields to romp through, so many places to poop. And the best part about the dog camp, no cats. They had their own separate campground, thank you very much. It was way off somewhere in the east. There wasn't a scratching post or a dangling thing or a bag of catnip to be seen for miles. Just dogs and tennis balls and squeaky chew toys and bacon for breakfast. Awesome looking obstacle courses for all the dogs who like shepherding stuff. Oscar hadn't seen a cat for five full days, thank goodness. Off in the distance, Oscar could see a mountain that looked like a huge hooked nose with a droopy wart on one side. Or maybe it looked like a pile of mashed potatoes with some kind of kibble stuck into the peak. Or maybe it was a mountain made entirely of a chopped meat with a bone-shaped dog biscuit poking out of the side. Yes, he was definitely hungry. Time for a dog's breakfast. He pranced across the open field heading to the mess hall, which because it was for dogs was always very messy. As he drew closer, he could smell sausage on top of the bacon and a fresh bag of beef jerky that the chef had just ripped open with his teeth. He picked up his piece and broke into a trot. Oscar was quite athletic. He was the star player of his school's tennis ball team. He was quite speedy, too. An average dog can run about 20 miles an hour. Oscar? Coach clocked him doing 27. He was also pretty agile. He might have to try out that obstacle course after breakfast and then, of course, reward himself with a nap. He was just about to dash into the mess hall and stick his muzzle in a bowl of meaty mush when he had to dig in his rear paws and skid to a stop. He would have crashed into a sleek black SUV, the same SUV that had chased him into the park the day that they had arrived. Chapter 6 It was the same snooper, super snooty cat family. Oscar sat down and tilted his head to the right while the cat dad scampered down the SUV. Their eyes met. The hair and hackles on Oscar's back shot up. The cat dad hissed, Trust me, he said to Oscar with most disdain. I don't want to be here. I missed you mangy mutts and mongrels either. Oscar tilted his head an inch more to the right. He didn't really know what a mist mean. Plus, there wasn't a mist anywhere, no fog either. The cat clawed a long gouge into a fence post. When he made a splinter out of jagged wood, he used it like a nail to hang a sign. It was a missing cat poster. 
Find Molly today, it said. White fur, blue eyes, last seen chasing a butterfly. Hmm, thought Oscar. Why bother looking for a lost cat? Would anybody in the whole world miss one measly cat? There seemed to be a million of them running around, scaring birds, tormenting mice, and yowling at the moon. One less wouldn't matter. Plus, Oscar was on vacation. Dogs didn't hunt for lost stuff on vacation, except bacon. If a slab of bacon went missing, then every dog in the park would form a search party, sniff the ground, and track it out. The cat dad climbed back into the SUV, muttering, Waste of a sign. Dogs can't read. If they could, they'd be aware of themselves, just like all the signs say. The tires on the big black vehicle shot gravel backwards as it sped away. When it stopped blocking the mess hall entrance, Oscar could once again savor the delicious aroma of bacon grease mixed with sausage grease. He licked his chops. It was breakfast time. Oscar! Uh-oh, his tail wagged to the left. Because his dad was screaming his name, which was still scary even though his dad basically screamed all the time. Come here, boy, said the dad. Grab your backpack. Your mother says we need to go on a nature hike this morning. Oh, boy, thought Oscar. We're heading off into the glorious, magical, marvelous park. He loped over to where his dad, mom, and sister were waiting. What about breakfast, he asked eagerly. His mother smiled. I packed meatloaf sandwiches and bacon smoothies. Oh, boy, thought Oscar. Meatloaf sandwiches and bacon smoothies were my favorite. Chapter 7 Oscar slung his knapsack onto his back. Did you hear, he said to his dad. One of those cats we met on our first day here is missing. Good, said his father. One less for me to chase up a tree. Duke, said Oscar's mother. Honestly, we're on vacation. Maybe, but a true dog's hatred of cats never takes a day off. Totally, said Fifi. They're like so prissy and cheesy. Their butts smell like cheese. Cheese, said Oscar. Is there cheese on their meatloaf sandwiches? Yes, dear, said his mother. Peanut butter, too. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Droy slobbered down the front of his shirt. His mother didn't mind. She was drooling, too. All dogs were. It's what dogs do. They hiked up a trail lined with pine bark mulch. This really is a magical place, said Oscar's mom, enjoying the scenery. Birds chirped. Butterflies fluttered. Bees buzzed. A rainbow appeared in the sky, even though it hadn't rained. Water cascaded over a fall, sending up a very refreshing cloud of cool mist. The air was fragrant with the scent of wildflowers. Everything was in perfect harmony, which meant after an hour, it was also kind of boring. Oscar could only take so much perfection and magic. He needed action, adventure, speed. He also was easily distracted, especially when a flying squirrel zoomed from one evergreen tree to the other. Oh boy, Oscar cried. Squirrel, flying squirrel, they're my favorite. He took off, running faster. The squirrel was saying, are they serving nuts on this flight? Chapter 8 Oscar flew through the underbrush as the squirrel flew over the canopy of the trees overhead. I'm going to get you, nutty squirrel, Oscar shouted. I'm fast, fastest player on my tennis ball team. You're not faster than me, chirped the flying squirrel, drifting effortlessly through the air. He had a very squeaky voice. I'm just gliding here, pal, not even breaking a sweat. This is so easy. I'm nibbling the nuts I've had stored in my cheeks since last winter. Num, 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 delicious. Oscar snorted the scent of the flying squirrel deep into his nostrils and stored the smell away in his brain. Now even if he couldn't see the squirrel, he could still chase it. I'm gonna get you, Oscar gloated. You said that already, chittered the squirrel twenty feet overhead. Well, I'm going to. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not, scoffed the squirrel as it floated between the trees like an autumn leaf with a jetpack. You're on the ground, pal. I'm in the air. I can jump. Fine, pal, jump. And while you do that... I think I'll, I don't know, I'll fly away. Oscar splashed across a shallow creek as the squirrel leapt from one tree to the next, spreading out his arms and legs to stretch its skin into a sail. Oscar's shirt was soft and wet. His pants were splattered with mud. This is fun, he huffed. Fun, laughed the squirrel. Ha, huh, you're nuttier than a porta potty at my last family reunion. So, chasing squirrels is my favorite thing. You need a new hobby, buddy. My name's not Buddy. Buddy's my uncle. I'm Oscar, and I can run 27 miles an hour. The squirrel kept soaring. Oscar kept running. Two hours later, the sun started setting. Oscar couldn't see the squirrel against the darkening sky, but he could still smell it. So he kept running for another hour. In his head, he did the math. I've been running 27 miles an hour for three hours. That means I've run, uh, uh, really, really far. 
In fact, he'd run so far, he had no idea where he was. Oscar was totally and completely lost. Chapter 9 Oopsie, thought Oscar. He put on the brakes. His tail wagged. Then it sagged between his hind legs. He was scared. No, terrified. He'd never, ever been lost before. Being lost was not one of his favorite things. Oh, what's the matter, pal? chirped the annoying flying squirrel from a high branch in a tall tree. Run out of gas? I thought you were doggedly determined to catch me. See what I did there? I made a pun. You want another one? I once knew a dog who wasn't fat. He was just a little husky. Get it? Husky? Help, Oscar yipped. Sorry, pal. Couldn't hear you up here. Help, Oscar shouted. Then he started barking it and baying it and howling it and yelling it. Help, help, help. He welled for help so hard for so long, his throat started to hurt. Whoa, choked the chattering squirrel from its perch in the tree. Give it a rest, why don't you? Can't nobody hear you because there ain't nobody in this part of the park except a few squirrels, a couple birds, and, oh yeah, a bunch of wild carnivorous beasts. Not for nothing, but carnivorous means that they like to eat meat. Dog meat, cat meat, they ain't particular. Oscar started to panic. Help, 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 help. You're so dumb, dog, laughed the squirrel. You probably sit on the TV to watch the couch. Oscar had heard enough. He was going to catch that darn squirrel. He jumped up as high as he could, about twice the length. Oscar couldn't jump as well as he could run. In fact, he barely reached the first branch. The squirrel, who was probably part cat, was way up in the 20th or 30th limb. Oscar couldn't count that high. He still wasn't very good at math. The squirrel said, nice jump shot, pal. Hey, you know the difference between a dog and a basketball player? One dribbles, the other drools. Thank you. I'm here all week because you're never going to catch me. He decided to abandon his flying squirrel quest and try to find his way back to the dog camp. He trotted about 50 yards and came to a burbling stream trickling across a path of rocks that made excellent stepping stones. Oscar crossed the creek, one rock at a time, then headed up into the forest. After maybe a quarter of a mile, he took a right turn at the moss-covered boulder, ran maybe another quarter of a mile, scampered down a steep slope, leapt across a narrow waterfall, hurried downstream on the far bank, turned left at a gnarled stump, right at a grass clump, then left, right, left, until he came to a burbling stream trickling across a path of rocks that made excellent stepping stones. He was right back where he started, and now the sun was completely gone. The sky was black and filled with tiny stars. The only sounds were creak of crickets and the soft hoot of owls. Oscar had never been this alone before. He was a city dog, lost in the woods somewhere and on the edge of civilization. His ears were back, his head bowed, and his tail was tucked tightly between his haunches. This was not good. This was the opposite of good. This was like when he was a puppy and used to pee on the rug in the house. This was bad, bad, bad. Chapter 10 But Oscar had one thing going for him. He was a determined, dedicated dog scout. Plus, he still had his backpack, and he was close enough to the creek that he didn't have to worry about water. He could lap it straight from the stream, which he did, for five whole minutes. Then, paws trembling slightly, he gathered up all the kindling and broken branches that he could find circling the bases of the trees. Stacking the wood crisscross style inside of a circle of stones, he found the waterproof tube of wooden matches he always carried, because a dog scout is always prepared, and in no time he'd made a nice cozy fire. Now he had warmth and light, and the crackling pock of burning wood and the drown out, would drown out the hoot owls and the other spooky forest noises in the night. Time for supper, Oscar said, to no one particular, because he was alone. He rummaged around in his knapsack. He didn't find any meatloaf sandwiches wrapped in wax paper. Mom always carried those in her picnic camper, but he did find three cans of dog food. He popped open one labeled beef and gravy and poured it into his tin camping bowl. It looked delicious. Of course, Oscar was so hungry. Anything would look delicious, even mashed dirt. He stuck his face in the bowl and gobbled down his dinner. Still hungry, he thought about opening another can. No, he thought. Save it for breakfast. But then he had another thought. Both cans? You don't need two cans of dog food for breakfast, so you could have one for dessert. And he stopped thinking, because suddenly... The woods surrounding him were filled with scary noises and frightening scents, and eyes, lots and lots of glowing eyes. One pair of eyeballs stepped out of the darkness and turned into a huge mountain lion, shoulders rolling, and it prowled forward and padded feet. 
The huge mountain lion wasn't wearing any clothes, and it was walking on all four paws. That meant it was a wild beast. The first one Oscar had ever seen. The mountain lion crept closer. It skulked right past him. Right past him? Then it stopped and turned around and growled at Oscar. Ooh, wild or not, the mountain lion definitely needed to brush its fangs more often. Its breath smelled like a pound of hamburger that had been stored for a month in an ice chest without any ice. Hello, dog, the fierce mountain lion whispered in a hiss. My, 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 you certainly are a tempting little morsel, aren't you? Too bad I already ate my supper. But then again, there's always breakfast. Not quite certain what might be on the menu tomorrow morning. Dog, squirrel, porcupine, muskrat, so many choices. Why, it's a veritable breakfast buffet in this neck of the woods. See you at dawn, lost little boy. The wild beast wandered away, licking its chops. Oscar started frantically digging a hole so he could bury himself and hide. Breakfast? First thing in the morning? He'd never been more frightened in all of his life. Chapter 11 That same night in the log lodge that served as the headquarters for the Western Frontier Park, the majestic Hawk Owl Ranger was holding an emergency meeting with the families of the missing dog Oscar and the missing cat Molly. The two families stood on opposite sides of the great room, growling and hissing at each other. So somehow the cats have learned it. So, so how come the cats can't learn any tricks? I hate cats. So we hated you first. Why don't you dogs ever give yourself a bath? So they're not getting much accomplished. Madam Ranger, said Molly's father. Boomer, might we open a window or two? The dog stench in this room is positively overpowering. Is that so, kitty litter breath, barked Oscar's father, Duke. All I smell is fish. What'd you furballs eat for dinner tonight? Soup made out of the ocean? Silence, demanded the hawk owl. Your constant bickering, barking, and caterwauling isn't going to help us find Oscar and Molly, who might, I remind you, are both lost in the wilderness, and by wilderness I mean dangerous dark forest filled with wild beasts, the kind that don't pick up their meals at the supermarket, the kind that eat whatever smells good or happens to wander in their path. Duke and Boomer both swallowed hard and then the hawk owl said, when the hawk owl said that, and then they both did something miraculous. They both shut up. Now then, said the hawk owl, ruffling up her chest feathers and pacing back and forth. I wanted to let you know that I've called up our elite rescue squad, the finest hybrid hunters in the world, the grizzly wolf bears and the Limedales. Four enormous creatures decked out in a rescue team geared marched into the meeting hall. The two grizzly wolf bears had the heads of wolves and the bodies of grizzly bears. The pair of lion dials were half lion the top and half crocodile on the bottom. These creatures are combinations of nature's greatest hunters, said the hawk owl. The two grizzly wolf bears will patrol the forest, and the pair of lion dials will search the park by swiftly swimming through its many water bays. My fellow hawk owls and I will provide air support and fly reconnaissance missions. One of the lion dials, who seemed to be the leader of the rescue team, stepped forward. We will not return until we find your children, he proclaimed, shaking out his magnificent mane, even if it means getting my hair wet. Boomer and Duke stepped forward to shake the lion dial's scaly hand. Thank you, good sir, said Boomer. Yes, said Duke. Thanks, pal. The noble lion dial nodded. I can only imagine how you two must be feeling right now. I am a father, too. When the rescue team leader said that, all the two fathers could do was nod and sniffle. And when they were for sure the other one wasn't looking watched, they both sobbed. Chapter 12 Meanwhile, off in the dark wilderness, Oscar heard a rustling in the woods, and it was scarily close. Deep in his hidey hole, Oscar started to shake all over, and not just because he was cold. His campfire had burned out, and he was too terrified to search for more wood in the darkness. It was, it's the mountain lion, he thought. It's come back for me, a midnight snack. More rustling, twigs snapping, leaves softly crunching. Wait a second. A few thoughts lifted across Oscar's brain. Softly crunching? That mountain lion is huge. It couldn't softly crunch anything. Mustering all the courage he could, it wasn't much. His courage batteries were nearly drained. Oscar poked his head up, an inch and peered over the lip of his hastily dug hole. He did indeed see a cat. But it wasn't the mountain lion, distant cousin to all the cats who lived in the city of Catsburg. No, it was a young girl, maybe his own age. When she stepped into the moonlight, Oscar could see that she had white fur. Well, it was kind of off-white because she was seriously matted and full of leaves and dirt and twigs. Her blue eyes sparkled like the ones in a stuffed toy cat that Oscar chewed through once. 
The cat was also missing the tip of her tail and the top of one ear. Wow, somebody really roughed her up, he thought. What in the name of Tug of Toys happened to her, Oscar wondered. He stuck his head up out a little higher. When he did, his metal dog scout neckerchief clasped ding against the rock. It pinged like a high-pitched bell. The cat's ears shot up. She saw Oscar and hissed, so Oscar did what any other dog in his situation would do. He chased after that cat. Chapter 13 Molly sighed once and then bolted away from the dumb dog's ridiculous excuse for a campsite. Typical dog, she thought. Forgets all about the ferocious mountain lion prowling out about and chases after me instead. That is right. Dogs are dumb with a capital D. You're just like my brother, Molly shouted over her shoulder. So easily distracted, you have the attempt, attention of a gnat. Yeah, said the dog from ten yards back. I sometimes worry about that, but not for long. I'm going to get you, cat. Oh, yes, I am. Molly ran with her head level. The dog's head, of course, would be bobbing up and down. Easier for the troll to drip off his flopping tongue while he was panting. I can smell you, barked the dog. Oh, really, said Molly, darting sideways into the underbrush. I could smell you from two miles away. You smell like a wet, dirty dog. Molly was swift and had more moves than the dog, but she had to admit the dog was fast. He was right on her tail and gaining. Molly wasn't really sure why she had ventured toward the dog's hiding place, maybe because she hadn't seen another civilized creature for a while, not since she snuck off into the woods to work on her emotion, emoting skills and ended up getting lost, horribly, terribly, miserably lost. Molly wanted to be an actress. Actresses had to show a wide range of emotions something that was difficult for most cats. They usually went from cuddly to snarky and furious without much in between. Her father and mother didn't approve of Molly's dreams of being on the stage, or better yet, in the movies. Some cats made excellent actresses and performers, like Cattley Portman and Kitty Purry. In fact, Molly's favorite films all featured cats, The Fast and the Ferocious, Whiskers in the Dark, Kitty Kitty Bang Bang, but Molly was a good girl. She always did what her mother and father told her to do, at least when they were watching. Waste the time her father had purred when she told him her dreams of being an actress. Trang's dogs appeared in shows for other people's entertainment. Sensible cats appear only when they want to. Concentrate on your napping, dear, suggested her mother. It's the only skill you'll ever need. Plus bathing, her father would always add. Mustn't forget bathing. Feline hygiene is very important. And then he'd sit down and lick himself, but Molly wanted more. Of course, at that very instant, all she really wanted was to get away from the stupid boy dog charging after her. Fine, she thought. This dog cat chase will end as dog cat chases ended ever since immemorial. She spotted a tree with two trunks split like a V and leapt nimbly between them. The dog, he was once again easily distracted. He saw a fluttering moth and stopped watching where he was going. That's when he banged his muzzle right into the tree trunk. So we're on chapter 14. He's chased her up the tree. They've forgotten about the lion. We're going to see what happens next.